Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back! It's BTS Europe Grand Final. We're in the final game. It's game number five of Navi versus Fantastic Five. We have finally made it in, but we have a lot to talk about. First and foremost, of course, I've got to apologize on my behalf. My internet provider said, you know what? Screw you and your Europe Dota. We're going to cut it off for a moment here. Went ahead and rebooted it up. Scant, I want to apologize to you. Sorry that I just kind of went missing in action. I know that feeling of reaching out to your co-caster and getting no response and then feeling dead Five inside. So remaining. I hope you're feeling better now. And uh, hopefully everything is stable and we get ready for game number five. But since you were there, Scant, can you give us the lowdown of what happened at the back end of game number four that got Fantastic Five their victory? Uh, I, I mean, I would just say the push strat succeeded. It, it finally like reached that critical mess and they got some Raxes. Navi went for a desperation fight, didn't work out, and that was the end of that. Um, it is interesting then that the first ban for each team is the the hero that their push strats have been successfully based around is the Venge for Fantastic Five, the Chen for Navi. And Navi sat for a while, deciding if they'd go for this Lycan, and they ended up picking it. And Gods and I actually discussed this yesterday because Chen and Lycan are two heroes that Navi really liked to death ball with, but they hardly ever pick them together because the Lycan actually doesn't land that well. Um, you could pressure like in lane with the aggressive lane, just like Fantastic Five did the aggressive lane last game. Mm -hmm. And if Chen is one of your supports, Radiant then you're gonna have less back. support actually for that like and to deal with that. So it, it, it's definitely great to have both of them together in terms of like the time you're gonna peak and start actually assembling your death ball. But in terms of the early pressure and the way that uh, the way that Navi managed to what well, no sorry the way that Vega managed to beat Navi yesterday. It's, it's certainly impossible for Fantastic Five to go that route in this game, I think, to try and just, like, shut them out the game before they even get to the, the push timing. So what would we like to see out of them here to kind of capitalize on that? Like, first thing that comes to mind is, like, what, you want to build a like an aggro lane setup and get, like, a, an undying, let's say, or just any sort of respectable off laner here for, for Ghost plus one, and that way you can pressure the like in. And the fact that he'll only have Radiant one available back. to him to help in his lane with Chen having to be busy in the jungle. I, I know what you mean. Being able to take advantage of that seems to be like a, possibly a, a thorn in the side for Na'Vi and their lineup. And I hope that Fantastic Five can build on top of it. We'll see. What I, wonder if they even I wonder if they even consider something like Bounty Hunter to just go directly at the Chen. I mean, there's more, Five you know, you can pressure the Lycan because there's a Chen or you can just pressure the Chen. Uh, the, the the bottom line is that Navi need to hit their timings, and if they don't, Navi they're in trouble. If they do, back. they you know, that's how this series has been. That's Navi how this tournament's actually ended up being. Yeah. The team that has a push strat hits their timing usually ends up winning. The team that has a push strat doesn't hit their timing usually ends up losing. Uh, if if you have a draft where one team's trying to push and the other isn't, that's just the dynamic that happens in Dota. Yeah. Well. For now, Fantastic Five, after they've made their already commitment to what looks like their mid lane Queen of Pain, they covered their bases by banning out the, the Viper here. But still remaining. a lot of options for Navi to reach for. And probably going to need that remaining. mid lane more dependent. Uh, or not, they get the Bane here, which is Radiant a bit peculiar. I mean, we talked about what the possible shortcomings were for the Chen like and duo. Bane. Typically, when we see to hang around the mid lane and make their advantage known there, is this make things a bit scary for the Lycan, though, Scan? I mean, or is Bane going to have to be stuck by his side now in the laning phase? Well, Bane does set up for Chen. That's quite nice for the ganks. That's There's true. also, if Lycan, for whatever Ten reason, is against just an off laner, Bane will do fine to, to, to protect the Lycan. The major concern is if there's that aggressive lane against the, the Lycan, I don't think Bane's... I, I think you're exactly right. Bane's not going to really do well against the aggressive lane. Maybe Bane then switches to the mid lane to put pressure there to try and pull heroes away from the aggressive lane. We'll see. Fantastic Five, I'm thinking like maybe a, I don't know, a Spirit Breaker if they want to, they need someone to kind of be a, a brute force bruiser. Um, I, I, I tickled the name on dying before, uh, but... You know, building on top of that, they already have the hefty right-click potential between the Venge and Queen of Pain here. Maybe you look at Navi's push lineup and you get ways to, to out-spam and clear out. So, I'm curious to see if they, they look to go down that road. Uh, Yol, as we know, being one of the more poorer support players, is a Chen player himself. So, I'm sure he might know what the counters are. I mean, I'd say, like, maybe you go 
get a bounty hunter and mess with them in the jungle, which it could give you that early advantage. But if it doesn't work out, bounty hunter's not good against group up and push. So yeah, it's it's like I mean, if you go all the way back to TI four, the what we what ended up being Deathfall Mesa, Cloud Nine did that actually. Like in a context of a, I mean, they didn't actually. I think they ended top eights in the tournament. But there were one or two games where they beat the death ball by picking bounty hunter and like going underneath it, mm-hmm. like just being so aggressive before it even starts. And I think you're exactly right. Like it requires the execution to work out. So it's a bit of a risk in and of itself because if you pick it and then you don't get underneath them, then you you one hero down when they start pushing you, and it's a bit of a joke. But Fantastic Five just going for the gyrocopter here, which we did say uh, in the in the previous game. I think game two. Where Navi went for the all-in push strategy, mm-hmm. Gyro was going to be a good pick there. Although it turned out Navi actually destroyed them that game, uh, 20 minutes. So, I mean, uh, Gyro maybe like didn't have enough support early on in that game, and already slightly different setup here in terms of the Venge and the Queen of Pain. Pretty active early. Pretty uh, Fantastic Five looked like they're very good lane dominating early killing lineup, which is kind of what they need to have, I think, to to get underneath the the Navi push. So what does it say though about the lineup already? Is this uh, for certain now support vengeful spirit? I mean, we're banking on the mid lane queen of pain, gyro to take what we imagine being the safe lane farm, unless they do indeed push forward with being an aggro lane into the lichen and have the gyrocopter go up there. Uh, otherwise, it's just a trusty, I guess, support vengeful spirit. Yeah, they, I mean they 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 won the last game with the aggressive tri lane farming venge, and they are against the lichen. So I, it, it's not clear to me why they would like. There's no reason they can't do that again if they want to. Okay. Um, I guess they don't know. The one thing is they don't know Navi's off lane yet, and it might be that if you run an aggressive tri lane, you end up like in an unfavorable one v one. But that's also part of why you pick the gyro then, because gyro's got very few unfavorable one v ones that exist in the in the game. Tiny was the pickup here from Navi for their fourth grab now, and. Uh, could be typically good on his own in the mid lane, Ten but against the Queen of Pain, remain. you know, it, it could be a bit sketchy there. And Fantastic Five, Five still have plenty of wiggle room remaining. to work with, and they dip into Not a Bat Rider pickup now. Bat. So they now have great lockdown for the Lycan and good catch. And not too many ways to really stop the Bat Rider, unless you're talking Bane to be able to get off a, a quick sleep or something. Outside of the extra healing power from Chen, it could be remaining. tricky for them to stop this Bat Rider from getting what he needs. Five I'm just wondering what did Jiraz play, because Lycan and Tiny are two of his main heroes. I I somehow feel like he'll play Lycan, because I just like top. don't... It feels like Shadow feels like more of a Tiny player to me than a Lycan player. Yeah. Um, it's maybe something that Fantastic Five didn't see coming, the Tiny pick, because because those are heroes that Jiraz usually plays both of them. Uh, that said, I, I do feel like Tiny puts them even further into that same position where as the draft sizes up, it feels a lot like there's the Radiant Fantastic Five are going to like win the early aggression and then Navi just can't push, or they're not, and then oh. when Navi push, they're going to be pretty hopeless. That's it, It's starting to become quite polarized, the way the draft looks to me. Yeah. Fantastic Five will rid of the Lena here, one of the options, I guess, as a... Well, uh, it is a bit peculiar here because I wager Navi was going to be going for the off lane here. Fantastic rid of Alina. Unless they're thinking this tiny is going to be utilized in some sort of off lane setup, maybe some pull Ten shenanigans. Or maybe they actually, just don't have to deal with the burst against their gyrocopter or something. Five seconds remaining. That, that's actually a good point because Axmo has played the, the off lane tiny. I've seen him play it. And Reserve. it does go reasonably well with the Bane because okay. if you get those nightmare setups, it toss people back. Oh, so yeah. it's. It's a possibility that it is offland tiny. That's true. That's true. Hmm. Well, if if you are going to be going down that road, then a ti- uh, Zeus. We go back with the Zeus, something that was trusty to him at the start of the day and in their previous series. But they go back to it here to round things out in game number five, which does lead us to believe this indeed will be an offlane tiny. And now we have Zeus in the mid lane matchup against the Queen of Pain. Fantastic Five have the luxury of the last pick here. And we'll see what their response is going to be. Still hefty push. Lots of spam. Now huge burst coming out from Zeus. Ten seconds. And it makes it very difficult for the bat to blink in. The last grab is going to be the Spirit Breaker here from Fantastic Five. So, lots of pressure. Yeah, it's... The dynamic is completely unchanged. It's 
what's the timing is going to be for Lycan and Chen when Chen gets mech, when Lycan gets necro three? Are they going to be in the right position to just go and barrel down the lanes, kill all the towers? Or are Fantastic Five going to have, you know, weaken, weaken them enough early on that the, the timings are sufficiently delayed? And honestly, right now, I feel like a lot rides on how Fantastic Five lane this. I, I think they should be running the aggressive tri lane, yeah. I think mm -hmm. they should be pressuring the Lycan because even if Chen's at the lane all the time, Lycan and Chen and Bane is, is weaker than what they've got to offer with the, the Gyrocopter, the Venge, and the Spirit Breaker. Ten seconds I mean, remaining. The way they've assigned it already doesn't really give any new clues, except that it still could just be a sole offlane bat. So I'm also just curious to see as we get underway to game number five of our BTS Europe Prepare Grand Finals that. between Navi and Fantastic Five. Already, already early rotation here from Sonico gets a very subtle ward here to scout out if Fantastic Five are either going to maybe smoke move through and just be a no show in the bottom lane or if just their off laner wants to kind of get that early advantage but it is the former here is fantastic five we saw this from the first couple of games they'd love their early five man smokes this time no smoke but they are looking to pressure this bottom rune no indication quite yet it appears to see how they're going to look to lane it up nothing funny really in the item department either so We'll see what fantastic. Yeah, Sonico is. definitely expects the aggressive try lane. That's what that ward's about. And looks like Fantastic Five keeping their options open. Not completely decided on how they want to lane it. They don't want to get dodged. Oh, they get a very deep. And look at that. Here. It's it's to block the camp to stop the the tiny tossing creeps to the uh, mid lane. Yes, of course. Good heads up there from Fantastic Five, recognizing this will be the Axmo offlane. Tiny, not going to give him the opportunity for any sort of pull shenanigans here. He does not have a, a sentry himself, so we'll have to make do with just the old way of kind of making Tiny work. And uh, with their laning set up, as it appears, Ventral heading towards the bottom. Sedoi is just going to have the time of his life, and they will just keep it as a dual setup for now as Yol will be joining in hand, it looks like, with Ghost here at the top lane. So mild aggro lane. Yeah, and that's... I, I think that's actually a reasonable setup too. Because the thing about the Spirit Break is you can also charge into the mid lane. And so you're going to want your Bane to be mobile, moving between the lanes. Your Chen's going to be at the jungle all the time. And so this way you actually spread the aggression and you, you make Na'Vi constantly have to like think twice about where's the next kill attempt going to be. Already this tiny being put in check, so we're expecting him to have a bit of a slow start here without access to that pull, and he shows it here. Top lane, Yol, kind of creeping his way in, but we'll see what kind of opportunities he hopes for. If Sonico oversteps himself and gets caught with one too many stacks, it could be trouble, but he did get the early wand already on his Bane. He's got four charges saved up, so always will have that in his back pocket. Ditya Ra doesn't have a, a wand yet himself. Could decide to buy one here, but in the meantime, Bat is just going to be happy to kind of roll forward and get easy XP. And Navi are just going to have to keep wondering where Yol's going to be if not seen on the map. So has that mentality factor to kind of keep them guessing. Yeah, from Yol's perspective, he, he needs the level two. Obviously, they don't they don't know which skill he took at level one. It's well done by Sadiko to actually pull away the the attempt that are pulled there. I think that's very important that. Uh, Fantastic Five aren't getting these pulls off. If they are, it's really going to cripple Ditura. Uh-oh. Four stacks here, possibly. Yol could commit for a charge with this one. No. Oh, no. He doesn't even have the level. Nice. Yeah, hoping for a bash, yeah. I suppose. <laughs> getting close That's to that level two. If, if he was level two, then I'm pretty sure he would have gone for it. It's like, just see what happens. Has it now. And uh, was going to be heading towards his top level two or minute two room where art style is already going to be getting it charges out our style will grab up the bounty shadow under pressure here from bzz there is going to be the kill the vision provided from that charge art style trying to sweep in to get a bit of a response gets the net connection on the bzz but queen of pain a bit too fast i was getting owned by the spirit breaker he was full hp that was like four hits from spirit break including a bash and showing its dominance and that's what i was talking about charge into the mid lane and usually when you're against the spirit breaker your mid laner needs supports that could tp in and like instantly save or stand behind and protect but they can't do that because they need the supports to be helping the the safe laner 
That's the weakness of having the Lycan as your safe lane. If it was a Gyrocopter or something stronger, more self-sustaining, different story. But charge on Sonico now, and all oh, that turn rates with the Napalm making it really oh. difficult for him oh, to actually get out. A little bash right there for you. He eats a fairy fire. Can we get another RNG bash? No, we cannot. So Nico will make it out back to his fountain safely. It's still a win. It's still a win for Fantastic Five because yep. the Lycan gets very little in the lane whenever he's alone. Uh, lucky for him, the creeps are going to be pushing in. Uh, it's Bane has to run all the way back now. And no boots anytime soon for this Bane, I think. And as the mid lane matchup continues here, Zeus 12 and 1, the Queen of Pain's 15 and 5. Now under a bit of pressure here from Art Style. Net, and a little shockwave there to kind of make her feel it. Axmo, you know, this is something we've been seeing from a couple of the games now. Not looking too good in his lane, and he's like, yeah, what's happening over here? I got a combo, you know, I got a, I got enough mana for a stun and a toss. Maybe we can find an opening. Steps away, says, oh, he's back. Looks so close, so easy of a target here. BZZ just does not want to back. Radiant's he's hoping for the bottle, which he gets now. So this is going to be an opportunity to go for poor little Tiny. So, so far, Artstyle not succeeding in any of his rotations. I mean, it's pretty difficult to gank the co-op even with the troll creep. Unless you have the troll and the sentinel, but he had the troll and the, the satyr. Uh-oh. He goes to the top lane now. Yeah, they got the sleep set up, as mentioned in the draft, with the stun, shockwave, everything. Makes for easy kill on the bat rider. That's pretty important. It's it's pretty important that there's not one-way traffic. Navi don't want Fantastic Five to be the ones making all the kills, getting all the early momentum because then there really is that risk of them not getting to their timing. I, as things stand, Tiny is really not in a good position. And neither is Zeus after going down to another charge. So that's uh, two deaths now to the Zeus. Tiny getting basically nothing. And Lycan is farming alright. Maybe a bit slower than he'd like to, but it's alright. Nice sleep setup allows the tower to be taken down from Ditya. Yol is already a charge out looking to go to Suniko, but they change course. And it looks like they're just not going to make this work out for now. Wolf's been kind of nipping at Yol here, and he does not like that as a support. Lots of damage coming out from them. and Plus that bonus perk that was added on these Wolves, it just makes it all the more difficult to really engage onto this Lycan. So he's able to step back, and anything going well for Na'Vi at this point is just going to make him that much better. You, we were expecting Fantastic Five to build around a lineup that was going to trump Na'Vi in the early game and maybe even punish them for being so greedy while getting a jungling Chen, but Chen's doing great. He's getting lots of freaking farm here. He's third in CS. He's near the top in net worth. Navi's got to be but pretty satisfied. The, well, it's the Zeus who's, who's struggling for it, and especially now that Queen of Pain's got her ulti on nine. The Zeus is going to die every time it gets charged. Right now it looks like Spirit Breaker focusing a charge onto the, the offlaner to keep the tiny down, but both of them... Yeah, actually... Queen of Pain just solo kills Zeus, so <laughs> don't need Spirit Breaker. Spirit Breaker will go bot, and let's see if they can kill Axmo as well, cancelling the charge at the last second. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. Yeah, Axmo as well. He is pretty crippled. Level three gonna be waved up right now. Fantastic Dyer's five, not afraid to show their pressure here. Attack. Art style already putting himself in position. Yol creeps in from behind, gets a nice deep. Secret shop ward in as they do engage for Sedoy. Tossed on back under the tower. Gets his call down off. Yol approaches here. They're trying to make it go into art style, but they are outnumbered. And with Yol asleep, he can't contribute a whole lot. Now he is going to be easily isolated, trying to make a sneaky retreat up to the north. And look at this. He might actually find his way out from here. Oh, oh. Pump fakes the charge a bit and then gets caught by the net and killed. Okay. Yol just trying to create what little space is out there for the rest of his team, but like Sadoi getting caught under the tower before any sort of play was really set up. It was a really good rotation from Artstar, actually. Usually Chen's don't come with all their creeps to the opposite side of the map that early on. I guess he's already killed the tower, but you'd expect him to focus maybe on the mid lane next, and Sadoi was standing really far deep into the lane because it's safe for him to do that unless the Chen's there with all the creeps. It was just the Ben and the Tiny. Venge and Spirit Breaker and Jaha are just going to kill them both, but Chen being in there with that early creep power making the difference. And Sneeko's actually smoking around here. Ooh. This is going to be another kill in Sedoi. Yep. Man. Shadow gets charged up and taken apart that same moment. Bottom lane, Sedoi. Finished off, so Nico gets the last grab onto that one. 
back and forth tro trade. A Zeus for a Sedoi gyrocopter. And we'll, we'll yeah, see. I don't know. Oh, BZZ scouts out Axmo here, leads in with a Shadow Strike, and now Yol gets his charge follow up. And as Venge is trying to turn the corner, Arsal will help out with his creeps, but not going to be able to save the Tiny here. So I would say, considering the fact that it's, you know, Fantastic Five want to be doing really well right now. They're a bit ahead, but Navi are probably doing better than I thought they'd be doing right now. But there's the issue of the Tiny and the Zeus having very, very little farm each. In fact, they're both in the bottom fourth most farmed heroes in the game right now. But they're not getting nothing. They're not, I, I wouldn't say it's yet at the point where Navi's shut down and they're not going to hit their timings. That can still happen. Is it urgent right now at all for Navi to maybe make an early approach towards the the Roche? I mean, Lycan has his medallion complete. Is it necessary to maybe move on and still commit for something like the Vlads before that seems necessary? Or it could be ever so scary against something like the Bat Rider. Who is still working towards his blank, though. Needs a bit more time. Is currently actually moving into the enemy territory to kind of find that extra bit of farm. They're gonna smoke now, so this might be the rush. I don't think it's the Dyer's rush there, tower is under attack. but it's some kind of big gank rotation with the wolves discarding friends, and this is three heroes and a whole bunch of creeps running into the enemy jungle. Yeah, maybe like roundabout, see if he can get someone along the way. If you find nothing, turn back for Roche. Kind oh, of the enemy smoke's coming too, and a cooldown at the rush, but could be oh, huge. Here it is, Sedoi's got it. He pops it right at the choke point, all up with a sonic wave on through. Art Style's gonna be taken down, did ya? Bump to the high ground, he's stranded and trapped, trying to chew his way out with the Quelling Blade. Will have a TP, but no, it will be canceled. The path is now clear, he chops down the last tree, but oh, it looks like there's actually no free way home. He's gonna get burped up, and that is Fantastic Five. Beautiful timing, beautiful setup right at the Roche as Navi were trying to sneak in and get it done. That's very, very bad for Navi. That's gonna put Batrider close to blink. That's again Yeah, it's 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 really not what Navi needed. And to some extent you might say they're unlucky, but this charge onto no, it's gonna be cancelled. Like they, they did smoke into the enemy jungle looking for fights, and then it looked like they were like, Oh, no one's here, I guess we'll go rush. But it is also a bit lazy because sure you didn't run into the enemy heroes. The reason you didn't run into them is because they were grouping up to contest you at the rush because they expected you to go straight to the rush and if you're Navi you know that you're not going to win the full on fight so you know I, I feel like they sort of rationalized it oh we didn't see anyone guess rush is fine and that's maybe a, a lazy justification for going into the rush but that early yeah not really deducting who's on the map and around and unfortunately this one came back to bite them in the ass and it's not the best time to allow these kind of flubs game five grand final after all and for it, they will be punished. And with that comes big rewards here for the Fantastic Five. You're looking at a Ghost Bat Rider here who is just a couple hundred away from finishing out his Blink Dagger. It's not the best timing ever on a Bat Rider. It's been a bit of a slow roll from here, but just a, another wonderful tool for them to have when the fight breaks out. And what the hell? It looked like he was put to, he slept, but still he made the TP. Wow. Yeah, these things happen sometimes. It's to do with cost points, I think. So close. Um, but yeah, that's so that's gonna finish blink and spirit breaker getting level six. Remember, this is a support spirit breaker with the urn and now all the levels that he needs. And Quap not too far away from Orchid. The gyro is like a little bit behind, but going straight into the S and Y, not gonna be a helm of dumb game. It's the the intent is very clear. They want to just keep the momentum up. And if Fantastic Five actually going on to the gyro uh, going back now retreating if they if they keep the momentum up then it just like reduces the the timing like the i look at him he's actually skipping the blads yeah he's going straight into the necros because he also knows that the timing on his necro 3 is just it's huge in this game as soon as they have the mech in the necro 3 that's when they can try and start threatening and that's each time that fantastic five force them to group up or pick someone off that's going to slow down those timings and that's really the the, the tension in the draft right now and now Fantastic Five looking to use the timing of their Batrider blink here as they smoke up and swarm around this bottom lane. Navi are not going to be in sight for the latch, but they are instead going to make a trade themselves. They have a hell of an army here. I mean, look at this freaking thing. This is a full Chen pack, wolves and everything, muscling their way through this tier one. Glyph's going to be popped up from one side. Navi already using theirs. 
And all along the way, Batrider looking Radiant to maybe see if he can ca and catch fallen. anyone at the, the cross point. They will see uh, the Batrider at this. But attack. the push continues on here, it looks like, for Fantastic Five. While Radiant Navi kind of second-guessing where attack. they're, you know, want to commit at this point. Dyer's it looks like Ditya is going to take the top lane for farm, but the rest of their Dyer's team waiting to see if maybe anyone from Fantastic Radiant's Five approach them or not. Tower trades are really not the best for Navi right now. The draft wants to be able to get towers so quickly that you can't get the trade, and it looks actually like uh, it's Fantastic Five getting two towers, or Navi only getting one tower there. The problem is that Navi has recognized Dyer's that if they're split up, tower. Fantastic Five are really strong in terms of picking them off. The bat blink, the spirit breaker charge, being a pain, really mobile, with, now with the orchid, which they don't know about. So Navi feel forced to group up, but they, they don't have the items that they want before they're, they're going to group up, so it's... Well, there's one of them. There's the mech on Chen, but it's an awkward spot to be in if you're Navi because you'd you'd want to have to group. You you ideally want to group up only in five minutes time, and unfortunately the composition and items on Fantastic Five sort of forcing Navi to group up a little bit early. We'll see if they try to make something out of at least just getting the mech in the meantime, and try to at least press down the tier one bottom lane or. Get some more gold going across the team and across the board uh, because it's either that or just kind of pull attention away from the Lycan so he can muscle forward into his Necro book and just kind of make some split objectives happen. I mean, watching Ditya Raw play from back in the day on Power Rangers, this guy has brought back games on the brink of defeat just on rap play alone. So. Oh, hasted bats. They catch Oddstar here. Actually, the whole team is here. He needs to be careful. Ghostic needs to be careful. Oh, yeah, he's dead. Wow. He wasn't careful. He was no. not careful. No, he was not. He tried to cross the street and got netted up and absolutely dismantled there in the mid lane by Na'Vi. And now without the bat to worry about too much, Na'Vi confidently kind of strut on forward here. Uh, and Roche is up. I wonder if it's something they consider giving it a, a second try. Looks like no. Looks like they'll just kind of take their business elsewhere. Well, I figured it might be an opportunity Radiant for them to kind of move in there and get it done without having to fear of the bat. Yeah, they just, they remember what happened last time, and that wasn't even about the bat, that was just about the, the gyrocopter and Queen of Pain. Yeah. Um, they do see the gyrocopter arriving at the top lane. Maybe that signals something to them, but I don't know. They'll be hesitant about it. I, I think Fantastic Five, on the other hand, are feeling a bit frustrated there. Like, the way bat dies, it's like, this is not the, the narrative they expected. They didn't expect Na'Vi to be grouped up this early, because it doesn't make sense for Na'Vi to be grouped up this early, but... So credit to Na'Vi recognizing that staying grouped fallen. is what they need to do right now. At the same time, they they do lose out in the farm, in the farm department, because they have to be clumped Radiant together in one place or two attack. places maximum. They you have you'll never see Na'Vi in three places at once for pretty much the rest of the game. Na'Vi on the move, phase boots on the tiny here. Is that normal? I mean, for this kind of position, I guess he's in. I mean, any sort of mobility you can get a hold of. It's not your blink. It's not your treads for the attack speed. I mean, now he's lassoed up. He will be pulled back. And, oh, man, Sonic Wave follow-ups there, and he just gets annihilated. And now the rest of Na'Vi are in for the same fate, potentially. Ditya Rush shows up. It might be too late for him. His shapeshift utilized to make a hasty retreat. He's looking for some sort of potential pickoff now that Shadow has showed up, but it's just the two of them. And it looks like Fantastic yeah, and, uh, Five will get what they need and just get the hell out. The Orchid on the Chen doing very important work there because Chen didn't get ulti off. And if Chen does get ulti off, possibly actually Na'Vi can get something out of that fight. I mean, they still kill the Queen of Pain, which she's the richest person in the game. So if they're going to kill only one person, it's the best person they can possibly kill. And Zeus has actually managed to find the lens. Nearly has level 11 for the level 2 ulti. So starting to recover somewhat. This actually a charge onto Zeus now, but I don't know what this is about, and Yol's the one who needs to run away now. Gets the safety bump back from that flame break there. Zeus quick to pull out the Thunderbolt and shut down that charge. Will make Yol think twice. And now It's going to be the BKB timing for, for Fantastic Five now, because that previous fights, if Cop and Jara have BKBs, that's just like a wipe, and no one in their team's going to die. So they're both building into it now, and Jara actually even skipping out, finishing S and Y, just like recognizing that right now Navi's lineup does very, very little. If yeah. Got PKBs. And maybe just a simple fiend script, but there'll be plenty to stop him from being able to get anything off. So in due time, 
Fantastic Five may have a a hard hitting fight that there will be no res capable response from Navi unless they can somehow scrap together some necessary last minute farm here. But uh, I don't foresee it. Axmo's trying to get maybe a blink dagger together. He's got fourteen hundred gold, but still needs more time for that. Zeus has got his Aether Lens, which is which is great, but still needs a lot more steps along the way. And a Necro Book level one on Date Yara. So Navi, Navi is needs a lot more time before they can hit any sort of necessary window. Well, there's the level two Necro Book. Yeah, he's he's not actually too far from the Necro three. So I I think they're just about fine, Navi actually in terms of hitting their window. I think that the problem for them now is going to come when when those BKBs come up for Fantastic Five. Mm -hmm. And if it's possible for Navi to get Necro 3 online before the BKBs are up, or at least while well, the BKB on Jara is already up, before the Corpse BKB is up, that might be a timing for Navi to exploit the, the map a bit to get some objectives, but it's going to be a very small window because Dejara is a couple hundred from his Necro 3 and Queen of Pain is only about a, a thousand away from her BKB. You gotta have Got to give credit to Dit Yurai, he's been a pest with these wolves, constantly kind of seeking him out for a bit of attention, getting intel and guiding out the runes if necessary. Looks like Fantastic Five have made their move with the BKB now online for the mighty gyrocopter. They're going to move into the Roche Pit. All the meanwhile, Spirit Breaker just creating space on the Space Cow up here in the top lane. Will hand over his own life, but now he buys back, feeling that the engagement is soon to come. Navi in the pit. There's wolves in the pit as well. They're eating a lot of damage. Here comes Navi. Quick on the scene is going to be Ghost. He gets the grab on a date. Yara pulls him to the high ground. Oh no! A blast from the past for him. Aegis was snagged out from Quap. Is going to be used. He's going for the TP, but he's not going to be able to make it out. Dit Yara is taken out of the fight. And it looks like for Fantastic Five, they lose three. BZZ, one of the last to stand. Blinks makes a run for it. What do you think, though? Is it good enough for Na'Vi to kind of get the best of the fight? They don't get the Roche or the Aegis, but outside of losing Dit Yarad, is this good enough? They get it's their mark? Yeah. It's an absolute mess for Fantastic Five, and they're very lucky Na'Vi didn't get the last of the Roche or the Aegis because that would have been, like, the, the entire game turned around. If Na'Vi got the Roche and the Aegis, then Fantastic Five are in a, in a much, much weaker position. Like, I... I think the issue really is Fantastic Five thought, okay, fine, Spirit Breaker went to make space, we get the trade-off, we're gonna get Rush, but they don't have, you know, they don't have Medallion for fast Rush, they've got the Venge Wave level two, that's something, but Gyrocopter doesn't have life steal, and the Gyrocopter, I don't know if you noticed, was on like a sliver of HP when Na'Vi arrived. That was all Rush, Rush, t like, Gyro was just tanking Rush the whole time, and Lycanthrope arrives, and there's like a 200 HP Gyrocopter just standing there, like, okay, fine, I'll I'll hit you, That's that's okay with me. <laughs> Just a bit overconfident with how much damage they could dish out to Roche that fast, I guess, and, and it certainly made them pay for it. Charge in from Yol will get him kind of placed in a little nugget in the tree as Yol will retreat back out, but oh, it's pressure back the way of Fantastic Five here to make a bit of recovery. They still hold the net worth advantage and XP advantage by quite a bit, but they got to be a bit more persuasive in their gameplay if they kind of want to maintain this significant lead. Taking advantage of the window while they had their BKBs here. Now down to nine seconds. I'm sure that's not how Sidoy wanted to kind of make his debut. I mean, this spectator is even feeling it right now. But Dyer's yeah, I don't know what that comment's attack. about, but uh, it's Guardian Greaves on on Chen. So Navi have Dyer's essentially all the items tower. they want. This is the timing they're planning for in their draft when they're just like gonna mess up and push things. Unfortunately for them. Uh, Fantastic Five are sort of at a, a key timing as well with those BKBs and could take them on, could trade with pushes. There's no way for Navi to dip, dip back into the rush put because that's already happened. So I think Fantastic Five can sort of force Navi to to fight them right now. Of course, for Fantastic Five, if, if Navi take the fight and, and somehow win it, that's a it's like a nightmare for Fantastic Five. It's really really bad for them. I mean, we could end up coming back to that former Roche fight and saying that was the tipping point for Na'Vi if that's how the game ends up going. And we'll see though. Na'Vi creeping forward here. They're going to get some counter ward play along the way here. But fantastic. Five not looking to back down yet. Now they get the vision. Are they looking to pursue? They are. Dive in from Axmo. Gets the combo off. 
Not enough to finish the Venge, though. A return fire from Magic Missile, and they're going to be taking down the Tiny, who has to be by back now. And now the call down comes out from Sedoi, and it's an instant triple kill with that and the flak damage. Ditya Ra is able to scrap together a kill for himself. Now looking for BZZ. The one-on-one -on -one matchup's going to be good for him. He gets a double as he tries to make it away. His shapeshift finishes, and he's charged up with a homing missile and everything even coming. It doesn't matter. He goes down. They end up splitting it. A three... Oh, it's a, oh, that's right, with the buyback, of course, with Tiny, a dieback for him. It is turning into a 5-for-3 trade. Big advantage for Fantastic What do you five, know? It, but, oh. it actually makes a big impact if there's a gyrocopter alive during the fight rather than just, like, dying immediately as the fight starts. He did most of the work for his team, actually, and that's the difference maker. At the, at the rush fight, the gyro died almost instantly. At this fight, gyrocopter barely got touched and finishes the SNY now. And I like the approach there from Fantastic Five. They were quite cautious about it. The Jarcopter didn't commit the cooldown too early. Uh, knowing that they should be winning these fights, but yeah. they need to take the right approach. And also also very clearly aware that if they lose the fight, it's disastrous. Yeah, being in a cautious position, but not fully retreating. Like, they knew that the time at the Rush Pit was, unfortunately, for them, a bit of a flub. Gyro, with at the right health at the right time, should guide them into a successful team fight. And they were confident in that, and... It shows it right there. They get the winnings they want, and now as they step back, they want to kind of ensure that this game is heavily in their favor, and they might even be able to force Navi into very restricted or leash, Dittura. and they will be able to successfully grab hold of Dityra here, pull him back, and get the kill. This is a huge step forward for the Fantastic Five in a troubled position for Navi. Yeah, he's he's got five back, but... He doesn't, that's not what he wants to use his gold on. Because he's got another timing coming off the Necro 3, which will be a BKB. And if he has to buy back now, it's like, is he ever going to get to his next item? Would depend on his team winning fight. So that's, if, if the, yeah, I don't think Lycan buys back. I think it's early enough in the game that he spawns pretty quickly. They're just going to lose one tower for it. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. More tower in the pocket here for Fantastic Five. We'll see. Dyer's middle Navi just doing what they can to kind of clear out the wave here. We'll probably get the tower into deny territory and contest it at that front. Nope, it will be taken down from Sedoi here. There's the swap back, but Axman will be able to get off the stun. Eventually, he will get bursted down from BZZ, and now Sonico under the gun. He drops fast, then quickly Shadow, a triple suddenly for BZZ, and buybacks are going to have to be forced out from the Bane. That was a... Such a good recognition from Fantastic Five. They could see Ditchera wasn't going to buy back, and so even though there's only a few seconds left on his respawn, they catch people out in that little gap, and it's not really useful. Okay, fine, he didn't buy back, he respawned, but now his allies are dead. Like, really good for Fantastic Five to capitalize exactly at that moment, like, make sure they catch some people out. Suddenly, Fantastic Five are awarded with a full racks takedown, and Na'Vi are just going to be stuck in. A bit of a rut right now. Fantastic Five will step back, quickly move forward with their farm, and, well, we'll see. They can wait out this next Roche and kind of move the pace forward. What's the game plan now, Scant, for, for Na'Vi? I mean, you're looking at a grossly under-farmed team right now. I mean, Axe was able to get his Blink Dagger together, but as we've seen already, even a Blink and Commitment combo is not going to be enough to burst anyone on this team down, really. And at that point, he ends up being rendered rather useless. And with BKBs online, Zeus is not going to be able to output a lot of damage. Where do you go from here? It's <laughs> I I guess you try catch someone out of the Fiend's group. But it's like, they need to be alone. Because if they're not alone, then you're not actually going to kill them. Other people can easily save. But yeah, I don't... There's not an easy plan for Na'Vi. They can't push down a lane. They probably aren't going to win a fight very easily. Um... It's a very it's a very bad position for them. And Vengeful Sprout on top of that has picked up a medallion now, which means that the next time Rush comes up, Fantastic Five can actually take it down a lot more quickly. Not risking Gyrocopter like tanking that much before. Gyrocopter actually also picking up the Demon Edge and the Helm of Dom, so it has the sustain now if he goes into the rush pit. And that's what's yeah, I think the net Fantastic Five are gonna wait for Rush. They're gonna walk in and take it. I I don't think Navi have any way to contest that. And at that point, like pushing with the Aegis, it's it's gonna require some kind of miraculous classic Navi players. I 
I think they actually, yeah, they backed up against the wall and this is not where they want to be. This reminds me a lot of the game yesterday against Vega, the one that they lost where they went for this kind of push strategy, missed their timing and then just really just couldn't play the game properly after that. Well, they'll, they'll get what they can for now. It looks like little art style here was able to finish out his greaves and moving forward into a Vlad's here trying to be that utility Chen. Offering any additional bonus work to his team, to his creeps. But fantastic five here. Not letting up and stalling out for too long. Could easily just kind of play the economy game on most of their map and the opponent's map. But they don't even want Navi to get that kind of second life here with this like in whatsoever. So they take their advantage and they stick it right to Navi. Already in the high ground here, Sadoi eats a stun, but pretty much shrugs it off easily. Brief save from Suniko, but now has to go into Fiend's grip. Gets a decent one off, but eventually just crumbles down, and we could be seeing the beginning of the end here, Scant. Navi in a lot of trouble, already just have dropped down three. Sadoi barely making it out with his life, but he is alive and well. Tier three is dropped. Rax is now exposed. Ditya Ra and Shadow, the lone survivors here on Navi, are trying their best to draw the aggro elsewhere, but not a lot they can do. Yeah, and it's it's that recognition from Fantastic Five that they got all these BKBs, there's nothing to be done, and Oddstar's just gonna call it, it's like, not Megas yet, not Rush yet, but it's, that's right, they, they missed their timing in this game, and that's it. Congratulations, though, to Fantastic Five. They are your BTS Europe champions, the first BTS Europe, and they walk away, and... <laughs> What a run for these guys. I mean, like I said at the start today, Scan, I haven't even been able to cast any of their games. The only person who's casted any of their games here at BTS Europe was Cyclops. And Cyclops only through that whole bracket run. And then we get to see them in the final and see what they're about. And they managed to take down Na'Vi in a matchup where I believe they were... Na'Vi were 70% odds favorites. Now, give or take, people may have thought that... Or may have thought, may have thought that Dendi was going to be in attendance, but he wasn't. And you know, chalk that up to what you want. I gotta say, a Fantastic Five put on a, a pretty good show. Do you do you think you yeah, agree? It's, <laughs> I, I I completely agree. I'm I'm happy for Fantastic Five. Congrats to them. I mean, three of their players, the the core players from Rock's Kiss earlier in the year, who were doing quite well at a certain stage, and it's nice to see them doing well again it's also really good for the region honestly the cis region and i don't mean europe in general i mean particularly the cis region has been by far the most interesting re region in the last couple of months there's teams popping up everywhere there's team spirit who are going to mars dota league there's now fantastic five have won this tournament we've got virtus pro we've got vega uh empire is looking pretty good again with the voice and Fennec. there's elements that the CIS region is really, really strong right now, and it's it's always nice for me when like they're spreading out who's winning what. I mean, I didn't even mention Navi in that, but you could have. I feel like you could have an entire CIS qualified at this stage. It's something that's been talked about before, but like the region really try like sticking yeah. its head out and saying we have, we have a lot of good teams. Certain majors even coming in the near future. I'm curious if any of these teams kind of got the interest of uh, the Mighty Frog or whoever's doing the invites, and we could see elements and those kind of teams at least battling their way through the qualifier or if I don't know maybe they would get their own region I don't know anything I'm not the the mighty valve themselves so we'll wait that decision in the future but for now we again applaud fantastic five congratulations to them grand champions of the first BTS Europe it was a pleasure bringing you the coverage here from beyond the summit you can catch me on my stuff at coddle guy but more importantly scan thank you so much for joining me again sorry about the few hiccups before but you've been a trooper making it through all five games and well, if you want to send your love to Scant, please hit him up on his Twitter, at Scantsor. So, Scant, before we go, anything you want to say to, to any fans or support? Tighten up the show. Uh, it was it was good fun casting. I enjoyed it today and yesterday. I'm probably just going to go take a break. And I guess good luck to you because you, I guess you're off to play Mafia and all <laughs> something. Yeah, we'll see about that. I'm pretty tired right now, so maybe my, my mafia role will be the napper. So we'll see. Everyone else, take care. Enjoy the rest of your day. And as Scan already said, there is mafia action happening over now on Beyond the Summit 2. Could switch eventually to this channel, so go check it out there. And we'll see you next time for future BTS events. It was a pleasure. Take care.